today I am going to talk everything jig fishing. This is going to be an in-depth little seminar style on skirted jigs. There's many different kinds of jigs out there or jig heads. You got shaky heads, uh, kind of something like this, like a shaky head. You've got swim baits, swim bait jig heads, kind of like that. But that's not what I'm focusing on today. Today we are going to be focusing on exclusively skirted jigs. How to fish them, where to fish them, what time of year to fish them, what's my perfect setup for fishing them. So stay tuned, you're not going to want to miss these important jig fishing details. So let's start off by saying or describing what a jig is. A jig is literally a piece of lead or tungsten, depending on the jig, with a hook in the back. You guys can see that there. And the sole purpose of a jig, I'm sorry, I forgot the skirt material, and then it has some sort of skirt material. There's a bunch of different skirt materials out there. There's living rubber, there is silicone, there is like hollow rubber. There's a bunch of different skirt materials out there, but again, it's just a lead head with a hook and some sort of skirt. And a jig is most commonly used to represent a crawfish. And it is no secret that bass feed on crawfish, especially in the winter time. And the jig is just a perfect crawfish imitator. It can also imitate a bluegill as well, but I would say most of the time, at least what I'm fishing it for, it's meant to imitate a crawfish. That's what a jig is. It literally, like I said, is just meant to imitate a crawfish. It's normally paired with some sort of trailer and it catches big fish. It straight up catches big fish. So if you guys are unfamiliar with a jig or haven't fished it much, I strongly encourage you guys to go out, buy a couple jigs and use them because you could honestly catch your biggest bass on a jig. I've caught some of my biggest, bag, uh, biggest bass in my life on a jig here itself. So that's what a jig, jig is, where to fish a jig and when to fish a jig. I kind of already briefly touched on it, but I like to pick up a jig in the winter time and I would say late fall to early spring. That's my favorite time to fish a jig. You can absolutely fish a jig year round. By no means is that the only time to fish a jig, but that's when I like to fish it in the winter time. Like I said, those crawfish get really active. That could be a whole nother video on just the stages of the crawfish, like molting cycle and, and how they go through that. And that's you know a bunch of different colors, sizes, all that, but we don't need to worry about that today. But that's why I throw a jig in the winter time is because the crawfish are on the move and that's just my favorite time to throw it. The best places to throw a jig are, or at least my favorite places to throw a jig are in some sort of cover. So that can be brush, it can be flipping a jig into laydowns that you see on the side of the lake. But the best places to fish a jig, in my opinion, are is rock. Rock piles, rock points, and that is 90% of where I fish a jig generally, especially on Lake Lanier. We all know those big spots love moving up on shallow points, especially rock and feed heavily on crawfish in the winter to get ready for the spawn. So that's my best place to throw them are on rocky points and rock piles. Like I said, you want this thing golly this is a brand new one here but if you use them correctly you'll start to wear the paint straight off and start to see some of that lead this is one i've been using here so that's my favorite place to throw a jig or those are my favorite places to throw a jig are rock and you know rocky banks steep rocky points uh steep rocky you know, bluff walls, stuff like that. That's my favorite place to throw them. My favorite colors, in my opinion, you really only need two or three. I would say you need a green pumpkin shade of jig, something like that. Maybe a watermelon, green pumpkin, doesn't matter. And then some sort of brown or peanut butter and jelly is a good one. Anything in that brown shade. There are certain times of year, specifically in the springtime, where you can throw a little red in there. It can work, but predominantly, if you guys are gonna go out and just start, get some brown jigs, get some green jigs. That should be a great place to uh, 
to begin and just start to catch fish on those. It, again, if, if the bass are eating crawfish or bluegill, I mean, most of that stuff's green pumpkin-ish, so that's what they're gonna eat. And then as far as jig trailers, I always like to throw a trailer on the back of my jig. It just adds a little bit bulkier of a presentation, as you guys can see. And it just adds a little bit more something, I think. It's probably more for the fishermen, but uh, that just makes it look more like a crawfish. And you can throw whatever your favorite trailer is on there, as long as it looks like a crawfish. The, uh, I've heard people you know, throw chunks on there. I'm not a big chunk trailer guy. I like more of maybe like a beaver style. So as you see there, just a little beaver. And then a twin tail style trailer. So there's two different approaches with that. The beaver style tail is more of a do nothing. That's really good when the fish are pretty lethargic for most places in the country. It's a good place to start and it's kind of like a do nothing action when the jig is under the water. Those beaver tails just kind of sit there and float. They're not making a bunch of movement and that would be category one. Number one is that kind of do nothing style trailer for a jig. The next style of trailer for a jig, like I mentioned, is that double tail or something with action. So this tail is gonna move a lot under the water and it's just going to be more erratic, move a lot more water and cause the fish to react a little bit more. Another good example of a trailer with action is the Strike King Rage Craw. That thing really throws the water around and uh, it's just a great trailer in my opinion. So those are kind of the two different styles of trailers. Brand doesn't matter, like I said, you either have moving, you know, moving tails or kind of a do-nothing beaver style tail. Those are really the only ones to, that you need to have. Now that I've kind of gone over all the details of what a jig is, what colors are my favorite, where I fish them, let's jump into the gear that I use. So for jig fishing, it can be pretty specialized. You're gonna want something that is a little bit more sensitive of a rod, probably more fast action. These jigs have decent sized hooks and most jigs have pretty decent sized hooks. So you want a lot of backbone to be able to drive the hook home when these fish pick it up. So for me, my perfect setup is a 7-1 extra fast, medium heavy. Brand, again, doesn't matter here as much with the rod. You just want something I would recommend with any bottom baits that you want something that's very sensitive, a rod that's very sensitive in terms of, so that you can feel just what everything is going on on the bottom. You can feel the, the rocks, you can feel the, the bumps, you can feel when the fish pick it up, etc. So you just want a lot of sensitivity. Pick your favorite brand or rod there, but perfect range for a jig I think is anywhere from seven foot to seven three is a good length of rod and again medium heavy for anywhere from a quarter ounce to probably five eighths half ounce uh, I predominantly throw three eighths and one half ounce jigs I just at least where I fish and what I'm doing don't really have any reason to go anything heavier or lighter I'm stepping down if I go below a quarter ounce I'm going to go to a spinning rod so this is my jig rod of choice. Again, 7.1, extra fast, medium heavy, super sensitive rod. That's the deal right there. Reel, uh, this could be controversial, but I actually like a super high speed reel. I do that with most of my lures just across the board, even if it's a slow presentation. I like, at least I think that I can uh, slow down and I like having that speed to be able to catch up to fish that are moving quickly or just have that speed, you know, once I hit a fish to get them away from cover or wherever I'm fishing. So this is an eight to one to one. This is a metanium. Again, pick your favorite reel. It's not the most important thing in the world. Uh, rod's more important. If you're gonna be fishing a bottom baits or a jig, get a rod that's better. If you only can afford one or the other, get a nicer rod and a medium, you know, mid-grade reel. It'll be completely fine. Finally, I pair that up with 15 pound fluorocarbon. You can go as low as 10. I've seen 10 when I'm throwing like a quarter ounce jig. I'm generally around rock and the fish don't seem to matter too much. 
or care too much. So I step it up to 15. 12 would be a perfect happy medium if you think that they're going to see it, but I've had no problems with 15. And then, golly, you could even, if you're around a lot of stumps and the water's dirtier, you could jump it up to 20 pound line as well. But that's my setup. It works perfectly for me. I've had zero issues, you know, pulling big fish out of cover with this, you know, a medium heavy rod and 15 pound line. It works perfectly. Hopefully that helps you guys and you learn something a little bit about jig fishing. If you have any questions, post them down in the comments below. Let me know what your biggest fish is that you've caught on a jig. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. It's completely free. Let's keep growing this thing and I'll talk to y'all soon.